Thank you, uh, Professor Vick. <coughs> so I will just drop on, start with uh, two of my own experiences. In the late, late 90s, we started, actually mid 90s, we started a program on industry-sponsored M-Tech in wheel side design tools and technology. This was uh, played a big role in development of wheel side design industry in this country because this was the first master's program which was industry-sponsored. And we took students who were actually sponsored by individual industries, and they paid their fellowship, and they also had the opportunity to do their project jointly with the industry as well as with the faculty. Later on, uh, when Delhi Metro was expanding, one day when I was the dean of postgraduate studies at IIT Delhi, uh, Mr. Sridharan came and wanted a very specialized master's training. So they wanted to, DMRC was expanding and also they are getting a lot of other uh, calls to support Metro in other cities. And they said that when we recruit people, we need people who are actually much more versatile. We don't just need mechanical or electrical. If you have a mechanical engineer, you should also be familiar with air conditioning, electricity, load, and so on and so forth, and also the policy issues. So we brought together mechanical, electrical, <laughs> civil, and management departments together to offer them a very specialized program, which ran for around five years, to train uh, the young recruits of DMRC into project management, as well as being uh, the engineering, working with the consultants that the DMRC employed. These are just two experiences, but there is a major change today. The, you know, typically we are just considered an MTEC program to be another program after a BTEC program. But if you look at globally, master's program are only popular in areas, new areas, or for transition, okay, in areas like computer science, or today in areas like AI, or in management, where people come with some different background, get trained very quickly in a year or two, and get into the jobs. But that has not been the model that we have employed here. IITs and some institutions like BITS have been allowing undergraduates to do the PhD for a very, very long time. I myself don't have a master's. I only did undergraduate and a PhD. But this has not been the trend in most of the country. With the NEP coming and government also now saying that you can directly go for a PhD with undergraduate, I think this should be adopted at a large scale where master's program typically should be industry sponsored. That will completely change because there is a need to um, create these programs where they address the students actually are available to address the needs. I will link it to the other question which remained unanswered and the, I will link it why this is important. Faculty in India typically come without any background in industry, typically. There may be exceptions here and there. So people normally do an B.Tech, M.Tech, Ph.D. and then become a faculty member. Of course, the elite institutions draw a lot of PhDs from abroad. Other institutions get a lot of PhDs which are actually locally trained. But they all have an academic exposure, but no real industry exposure. This has not been the case. So this has been a model which is more typical, I would say, US model. But if you look at the European model, many European countries will not give you a professorship in engineering unless you have had an experience of around 10 years in the industry. That has played a big role in the way that the academia industry partnership has evolved in European countries. But we have not had that. Because if somebody has never been exposed to an industry to think about, you know, uh, Professor Rajan talked about new knowledge. What is the new knowledge I will generate if I do not know? I will only generate academic new knowledge, which may not have direct application in industry. So there is a need for industry. And the way I would look upon it is that the industry should target students through the sponsored master's programs, and should target the faculty to be aware of it through very prestigious faculty fellowship programs, where the faculty members are invited to come and spend time with the industry, and so that they are actually become aware. And that's a very huge, you know, uh, there are like PhD fellowships that uh, was talked about earlier also uh, at PDAU and other places, but these are all, again, targeted to our students. But if we invest in faculty being aware of what the challenges of the industry is, I think we are, the investments are going to return. Because typically, faculty members return 30, 25, 30 years. And they get aligned to what the challenges of the industry are. It can play a very big role in the development of academic industry in interaction at a fairly low cost. So my suggestion to is to completely relook at master's program, especially in engineering areas. 
and also to relook at faculty as a major resource where awareness of the challenges of industry has to be built. And whatever chambers like this, the industry chambers like this can create, just like we created very attractive PhD fellowships, we should create very attractive summer fellowships for faculty to spend time with industry. Because the challenge here is there's today no common language for discussion between industry. The, you know, Professor Sovik talked about a very low investment. So a person who is actually today in academics cannot communicate to a typically a person who is in an industry because the industry people have short targets and all of those mentioned. So even that, unless the industry employs actually people who have a PhD degree, that's very, very small in most industries because they are more interested in their day-to-day -day challenges. So this can actually bridge the gap if there is a more awareness on both sides. Thank you.